Ooh, take a look at this situation. This guy is having a job interview with the manager of a company. And the manager asks him, describe your personality in three words. Describe your personality in three words. What should he say? What would you say in this situation? Do you know how to talk about your personality in English? Well, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you some, some good words that you can use to talk about your personality. Hey, if you like getting tips like this, I would be so happy if you subscribe to my channel right down there. Okay, so when we talk about, you know, a person being smart, or kind or funny, we're talking about their personality traits or their character traits. Okay, these mean the same thing, and we use the word trait. A trait is like, you know, something, a part of a person's uh, personality. You know, what's a person like? Are they funny? Are they smart? Are they kind? Okay, those are traits. Now, I think one of the most common traits around the world is shy, being shy. Are you shy? Okay. Like, let's say this guy and that girl are at a party and they've never met before and they see each other at the party, but they're too shy to, to talk to each other. They like each other, right? He's thinking, wow, that girl's really beautiful. And she's thinking, hmm, that guy looks really nice and he's really good looking, handsome. But they're too shy to talk to each other, right? He might wave at her and she goes like this. <laughs> she's too shy. She wants to talk to him, but she's too shy, right? Are you shy? You might not believe this, but I'm actually pretty shy. I'm a pretty shy person. You know, I always get shy before I make videos. Before I make these lessons, I always feel a bit shy because I know you're going to be watching my videos. So I don't want to say anything stupid, right? Otherwise, you know, I, I feel shy. Now, I'm in my room all by myself talking into a camera. So there's no one here, so I shouldn't feel shy, but I feel shy because I know you will be watching the video. So I always feel a little bit shy before I make my videos. It's actually very challenging to talk naturally into a camera. So I'm just talking into a camera. There's no one else here, but I'm trying to sound as natural as I can so that when you watch this video, it feels like I'm talking to you. Am I doing a good job? Am I natural? Let me know down there in the comments. Do I sound natural in my videos? I hope so. I hope it feels like we're together right now having a conversation. Anyway, so the word timid is another word for shy. Okay, timid or bashful. Bashful. Now, this isn't a very common word in English, uh, but you might see it. You know, if you're reading a novel or something, you might see the word bashful. Okay, so it just means shy. Now, here's another great word, reserved. Reserved. It, it sort of means shy. It has a little bit of a different meaning. It just means, you know, you, you don't maybe show your emotions very easily. You're a bit more reserved. So actually, if you're in a situation where you're, you're in a job interview, um, probably the word shy wouldn't be a good word to, you know, to say. Like if that person is asking, you know, describe your personality in three words, if you're in a job interview, probably shy isn't a good word because, you know, when you're applying for a job, you know, usually you need to, you need to act confident, right? And shy is sort of the opposite of confident. But this word here, reserved, that would be maybe a good word to use instead of shy. Now, introverted, introverted, do you know what that means? That sort of means shy. It actually has a different meaning, but, but, uh, but a lot of people think, you know, introverted means shy. Introverted just means that you, you process information in your mind. So introverts think before they speak and extroverts, 
extroverts speak while they think, right? They need to speak to process the information out here, whereas introverts process the information inside. So that's really what it is. But but a lot of people see, you know, this as the same as being shy. Okay. Um, now, a similar word is self-conscious. Self-conscious, right? This means that you're you're always thinking about how other people view you. Okay, so you're always sort of worried about, about how other people see you, right? So take a look at that woman. She's looking in a mirror, right? Doing her makeup and making sure everything is, you know, everything is perfect uh, because she's going to a party. And even when she's at the party, she might have a little pocket mirror and she's always looking to see is her hair okay she's worried you know about what other people think of her okay that that is self-conscious self-conscious so very often you know people who are self-conscious are sort of anxious anxious and maybe a bit awkward right awkward in a party if you're worried about you know how people are going to view you then you can feel a little bit a little bit uncomfortable or awkward right now, the opposite of shy is outgoing. Outgoing. That means you're very sociable, you know, sociable. You like social situations where there are other people. You know, you like going to parties. You like being around other people. You're outgoing. You know, maybe you are bubbly. A bubbly person is a person who just, who talks a lot and who smiles a lot. You know, do you know any bubbly people? I used to go to college uh, with a, a very bubbly, I had a very bubbly classmate. She was always talking, always smiling. And, hey, Mark, how are you? Great. You know, she's just very bubbly. Are you bubbly? I, I don't think I'm very bubbly. <laughs> I'm a little bit more reserved. Okay. Now, extroverted, extroverted, that sort of means outgoing, right? Most people use the word extroverted to mean social, outgoing, that kind of thing, right? So the next word we have is disciplined. Disciplined. Now, this is a very good word. This is a very good character trait. Okay, look at this guy. He says, I always finish my projects on time. I always finish my projects. He's very, he's very prepared. He's, he's, uh, he's disciplined. He knows, like, if his boss asks him, um, can you do this project? Can you finish this project by Friday? You know, then he's, he's going to work hard and always finish his projects on time. He's very disciplined. And that, that woman says, I go jogging every morning at 6 a.m., I go jogging every morning. Wow, she's very disciplined to wake up every morning early and go jogging. It's a very disciplined kind of a, a person. That's great. It's seen as a very good character trait. Okay. Now, usually disciplined people are very calm, organized, uh, organized. That means not messy, right? Like, to be honest, I'm not very organized. You know, my house is usually... A mess. My room is a mess. Um, you know, good thing you can't see my apartment because my apartment is, it's sometimes a bit messy, right? So I'm not very organized, but you know what? Every job interview I've had, you know, if they ask me a question like this, uh, like, how would you describe your personality? I always say I'm organized, so I lie. I think I've probably lied in every job interview I've ever had. How about you? Have you ever lied in a job interview? It's not good to lie, but I just, I know, you know, it's good to be organized, right? But the problem is I'm not very organized, so I don't want to tell them the truth. Otherwise, they might not hire me, right? So that's what it's, it's organized. Are you organized? If you're organized, I respect that. That is a great character trait to have. Now, methodical. Methodical is sort of similar to organized. You're, 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 uh, you're organized in your mind. You follow a method. It's sort of similar to analytical. If a person is analytical, they're always analyzing things before making a decision. I think it's pretty good to be analytical, right? Now, meticulous. That means 
you are very concerned about this, the small details. You're very meticulous, meticulous. That means you're not, you're not careless, right? Uh, meticulous can be a very good thing. Like for example, if you need to have surgery in your brain or your heart or something, you want the surgeon to be meticulous. You want the surgeon to care about every little detail, right? Because it's very important. If they make one mistake, you're dead, right? So you want, you know, your doctor to be very meticulous. Uh, now, spontaneous. This is also usually seen as a very good thing. People who are spontaneous, that means they can do things without a plan. They don't need a plan, right? Some people always need a plan. But spontaneous people, they don't need a plan. They're, they're usually very relaxed, laid back. Laid back means relaxed or go with the flow. Go with the flow. Okay, for example, if you ask me, hey, you want to go shopping with me? You know, I might say, yeah, sure, let's go. Or if you say, hey, let's go to a movie. Sure, let's go, right? I'm just sort of going with the flow. I'm a go with the flow kind of guy. Whatever's happening, I'm there gonna have a party? Sure, I'll come, right? I'm a go-with-the-flow kind of guy. Now, some people might think um, spontaneous people are a bit impulsive. Impulsive. Sometimes spontaneous people can be impulsive. That means uh, you just, you do something without thinking about it, right? Like, let's say that woman is walking down the street and she walks past a store and she sees a pair of shoes in the store. She says, I need to have those shoes. So she goes and she buys the shoes, right? She's just very impulsive. She didn't even think about it. She didn't sort of look at the price of the shoes. She didn't, uh, she didn't think about maybe saving her money instead. She didn't even think about if it was a good decision. She just, she just wanted the shoes, so, so she bought them. So she's a very impulsive person. Impulsive is sort of seen as a bad thing. It's not good to be impulsive. You know, here is another good word. Transparent. Transparent. Do you know what that means? That means you can see through something. Uh, for example, if you look out of a window, you can see outside, right? You can see outside because the window is transparent. Right? Uh, you can't see through a wall because the wall is not transparent. Like if I try to look at you through my laptop screen, I can't see you because my laptop screen is not transparent. It's not transparent. It's opaque. Opaque means you can't see through something. Okay. Um, now, this sort of means that a person is straightforward. There's nothing hiding. You know, they're an open book. Okay, so sometimes we, we talk about people being an open book. She's an open book, or I'm an open book. That means that there's, there's nothing hiding, right? It's like, like the book is open, you can see everything. There's, no, there's, no, there's nothing secretive, right? Uh, what you see is what you get. What you see is what you get. Sometimes, you know, people use this phrase to talk about their personalities. They say, what you see is what you get, you know? The good things, the bad things, everything you see, that's what you get. There's nothing sort of hiding. You know, very often politicians uh, are not transparent, right? And the people always say, we want our government to be transparent, right? People always think politicians are hiding things, right? Sometimes politicians have a hidden agenda, a hidden agenda. That means they, they're trying to do something secretly, right? And people don't like that. People want their leaders to be transparent. Okay, so that's a good thing. Okay, you know, the next word is conscientious. 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 That means diligent, hardworking, punctual. Punctual means that you're always on time, right? You're never late for work. You're punctual right? You're moral. You're principled. Basically, you're a good person, right? So conscientious means means you're a good person. Principled means um, 
you live your life by some principles, right? People can depend on you because you're principled. You're not like one person one day and then you're a completely different kind of person the next day. You're very, you're very principled, right? So that's, that's a good thing. All these words are very good things. So if you're in a job interview and you know, you get asked the question, describe your personality in like three words or five words or something, then, you know, you could say this, I'm a very conscientious person. Okay, that's a good thing. Ooh, now here's another good one. Charismatic. Charismatic. That sort of means charming and confident. Like very often politicians need to be charismatic to win the support of people, right? Like Barack Obama, do you remember Obama? He was very charismatic. People loved him, right? He would say, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And the people just loved that, right? Nobody knew what it meant. Yes, we can. What does that mean? Yes, we can what? <laughs> that doesn't matter. Politicians don't need to have any substance. They just like to, you know, play on people's emotions. They play on people's emotions. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Everyone's like, yes, we love you, Barack Obama. <laughs> so Obama was a very charismatic person. Now, politicians are also usually very dynamic. Dynamic means like interesting. They're, they're just, they're very interesting people. Now, sometimes, you know, politicians can also be aggressive. Now, aggressive can also sort of mean it sort of has a part of this too, right? Like, like Donald Trump, for example. Donald Trump is a very charismatic speaker. Have you seen some of his events, right? He just gets up there and he makes the crowd laugh and the crowd, the crowd loves him, right? So he's a very charismatic person, but he's also a bit aggressive, right? He's always saying, we need, you know, legal, everything needs to be right. You know, we can't allow illegal immigration. So he's a very tough person. So sometimes people want their leaders to be a little bit aggressive, right? So usually this word is not a good word. It's not good to be aggressive, but some people like if like it if their leaders are a little bit aggressive, right? Okay, now the next one is cooperative. Cooperative. This is also a great word. It's a great word. It means you can get along with other people. And that's really good. If you can't get along with other people, I mean, your job is probably, you know, it's not going to be great. Your boss might not like you. It's good to be cooperative. It means like collaborative. These two words basically mean the same thing. Supportive, right? Accommodating. Accommodating. That means that you are flexible flexible, right? For example, if your boss asks you to work on Saturday, but usually you only work Monday to Friday, and one week your boss asks you to work on Saturday as well. If you are an accommodating person, you'll say, sure, that's fine, no problem. But if you're not accommodating, you'll say, no, I'm not going to work on Saturday. My schedule is Monday to Friday. That's it. That's my salary is only for, the, for, for those days. I'm not going to do extra work. Right? So then you're not very accommodating. Uh, now, here's another one. Playful. Playful. That's a very great personality trait to have. That sort of means a person is curious, um, fun-loving, fun-loving. They're just carefree. Another one we could put here is sort of carefree, gentle. Gentle is part of being playful. Right? Like sometimes you see videos on Facebook of like two animals playing with each other. Maybe a big animal and a small animal, like a, a dog and a bird, right? Sometimes you see crazy videos like that. And the big animal is playing with the small animal, but they might, they might be wrestling or something, but the big animal is gentle with the small animal. It doesn't, not trying to hurt the small animal. Okay, so, so that's, uh, that's part of being playful as well. That's a good personality trait to have. Now, here's another great one. Faithful. People who are faithful are really great. That means loyal, reliable, authentic, 
be authentic means like real. It's just a real, honest person. Authentic, devoted. Devoted means means you are like loyal. You are focused on on one person. Like let's say these people are married and the husband is a very devoted husband, right? That means the wife will never worry that her husband will cheat on her, right? Because he's a very devoted, he's devoted, right, to her. That's great. Uh, And dependable, right? A person who is dependable, right? Faithful. All these words sort of mean the same thing. Trustworthy. Trustworthy. You can trust them. You know, they're not going to change one day and the next day. They're you know, they're very consistent. We could also put maybe consistent on this list as well. Um, now, independent. This is seen as a very good trait in Western culture. In our culture, if someone is independent, usually that's seen as a good thing, right? That means self-reliant. You rely on yourself. You don't always need help from other people. You're sort of you, you're, you're self-reliant. You're, you're self-sufficient. That means you can solve your own problems. You can supply things for yourself. You don't need help from other people. Uh, now, sometimes you'll see this word footloose or free-spirited, right? Both these sort of mean the same thing as independent. Independent. I would say I'm pretty free-spirited. Free-spirited. I don't like it when I have a boss. I like to be my own person. I like to do what I want to do. I like to be free. How about you? Are you free spirited? Uh, now here's another great one. Humble. Humble. That means, you know, respectful, modest, soft spoken, right? Just a very a very nice person, not proud. The opposite of humble is proud, arrogant, arrogant, right? Humble people are, are really nice. I love, I love humble people. Um, now, another one is idealistic. Idealistic. Okay, uh, that means not satisfied with the status quo. Do you know what this means, status quo? Status quo means no change. No change. Everything is the same. Okay, the status quo means everything stays the same. Now, in politics... Politicians are always, they're always campaigning for change, right? They're campaigning for change. That means they're they're saying things like, we need change. We need to change this. Our country is going in the wrong direction. We need change. (laughs) Politicians always say that. They never just, you know, stay with the status quo. Imagine if a politician said, I'm happy the way everything is in this country. I'm happy. Do you think they would win the election? I've never heard a politician say that. Maybe I should become a politician here in Canada and my my platform, I you know, a platform is like what you your principles, what you're going to do. Okay? And so so my platform would just be the status quo, maintaining the status quo. So I would say I think Canada's great. I'm not going to change anything. <laughs> I don't think I would win. I don't think people would like me because politicians always have to have some goal or some vision for the country, right? That's what it means to be idealistic, right? We're trying to make something better. We want it to be better. Um, Now, maybe the opposite of idealistic is sort of rational, realistic, okay? Rational means you just, you're you're very level-headed, level-headed or, or logical, sensible, right? Uh, for example, I want to have a million subscribers on my YouTube channel. I think I can do it, right? So I'm pretty idealistic. I'm pretty idealistic. Uh, now, if you are rational, you might tell me, Mark, forget about a million subscribers. Just focus on, you know, just make videos, don't think about, you know, the future, you know, all of the million subscribers. Are you crazy? A million subscribers? Just just be happy with your 
80,000 that you right now I have 80,000 subscribers so thank you so much if you're one of my subscribers I really appreciate you know your support but I think maybe I can reach a million so I'm a little bit idealistic I'm maybe not so realistic or rational in my thinking um, now here's another one resourceful resourceful this is a great character trait to have now look at this guy he is staying in a hotel room he's in a hotel room and he's hungry he has a pack of noodles but in his hotel room there's no kitchen he doesn't have a pot to cook the noodles but he has an idea he's going to use the coffee maker like the coffee pot to make his ramen noodles wow he's really resourceful that's great are you resourceful I think I'm a pretty resourceful person actually like you know I figured out how to start a YouTube channel um, you know this TV for example this is a second-hand TV I bought at Walmart for 300 and some dollars right it wasn't new a new one was like 700 or 800 dollars but you know I bought a, a second-hand TV and I have my setup here my microphone you know how do I get this picture on the TV do you know how to do it? Look, I can change this and it's changing the picture. So I think I'm pretty resourceful when it comes to a lot of things, technology or cooking or that kind of thing. So I think it's a great thing to be resourceful. It sort of means innovative, innovative. Innovative and resourceful are basically the same thing, you know. Innovative, innovative means like inventions. Think about inventions like uh, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein or uh, you know all these other people who invented like like the light bulbs or computers or like uh, Steve Jobs Apple right Steve Jobs he was very innovative he invented things like the iPhone wow that's crazy so that means like clever creative a person who is good at solving problems right imagine if you lived without your iPhone your phone right 20 years ago that wasn't a problem because that was the status quo but Steve Jobs he was not uh, he was idealistic right he he had a, a like a, the vision to have like a phone in your pocket that you could do everything you know and my phone has a camera I do banking on my phone I do everything on my phone it's such a such an important thing right uh, so Steve Jobs was very innovative he was solved a problem that didn't even really nobody knew it was a problem but he solved it so that's great um, now here's another one perfectionist this can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing um, you know sometimes you know, sometimes perfectionists are are too they're 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 too uh, what's the word uh, you know what I'm trying to mean right so it's a person who tries to make everything perfect everything perfect and uh, sometimes perfectionists and and people who are not perfectionist sometimes they can have some conflict right like take a look at this tube of toothpaste right when that woman brushes her teeth she puts you know the the toothpaste on her toothbrush by squeezing from the bottom of the tube okay so she starts at the bottom and she squeezes it up and then she rolls up the bottom right so as the toothpaste runs out in the tube right she keeps rolling it up from the bottom of the tube right? but this guy when he brushes his teeth he just grabs the tube from the middle and just puts toothpaste on his toothbrush and starts brushing his teeth and she says what are you doing don't do that you have to roll it up from the bottom right? so that's what it means to be a perfectionist are you a perfectionist you know sometimes people can fight over stupid little things like this and sometimes people get divorced over things you know I watched a, a TED talk a few months ago and the woman who was giving the TED, the TED talk you know what TED talks are right just just uh, search on YouTube for TED talk it's like an inspirational um, you know speakers they, they have that have good ideas that they want to share with the world okay, that's a a TED talk they're very good some TED talks are great there is a woman I can't remember what she was talking about but 
she said, you know, just the, she was talking about the, the smallest things that her husband did that just annoyed her so much. She said when they, when they first got married, those small things, she didn't even think about them. But after about 20 years of marriage, she said even the smallest things just really annoyed her so much. So this can really be a problem in a relationship if a person is a perfectionist. Now here's a very good word, empathetic. Empathetic. That means you can feel someone else's feelings. So that's great. It's like sympathetic, caring, compassionate, sensitive. Okay, all of these are very great things. They all basically mean the same thing. And this is a very great personality trait. A lot of the most helpful people in life are very, uh, you know, very empathetic. You can feel someone else's pain, for example. So that's really great. Uh, all right. So those are just some personality traits. There are so many traits we could talk about. But, you know, this this topic is it can be a really good way. It can be a good way to start a conversation with someone, right? Like, for example, that woman is asking her friend, what character traits are you looking for in a man? What character traits are you looking for in a man? Then she thinks for a bit, hmm, I'm looking for a man who's loyal, who's kind, who's resourceful, right? And maybe they'll talk for a few hours about their, their dream husbands, or something like that, right? So this can be a very good uh, conversation starter. So anyway, here are some words that we talked about in this video. Okay, empathetic, perfectionist, innovative, resourceful, rational, idealistic, humble, independent, shy, faithful, playful, cooperative, charismatic, conscientious, transparent, spontaneous, disciplined, outgoing. Now, I want to ask you, which three words best describe your personality? Which three words best describe your personality? Let me know down there in the comments. If I have to describe my personality, hmm, three words, I would say maybe playful, um, resourceful, and what are, what are the other options? Let me just look here. My three words, if I have to pick three words on this list, I would say playful, resourceful, and probably idealistic. Those would be my three words from this list. But let me know down there, what are your three words from this list? I'm looking forward to reading your comments. So let me know down there and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.